Let's go, it's the Whitey Show. Sorry if I don't sound great, I am sick, but I am still going to do this review because that's what I do for you guys because I love you guys. So, I popped in Dragon Ball Xenoverse, right? Expecting to fall in love the second I got into the story because the game promise you to kind of let you experience the DBZ story in a new light. Uh, Trunks is having problems with the time history and you gotta go and fix it to make sure it ends up the same way it did on the show. So you get a lot of what ifs. And I love that because that was the best part of the first Budokai game. So I put it in I let the graphics play. I'm like, okay, this looks pretty good. I smile and then I'm thinking this is the DBZ game we always wanted. Or so I thought. Indeed. They both have high power levels. If we steal his energy, Demon Realm will soon be ours. I'll defeat them both quickly. Which final man ain't got in your head? The good are what ifs in the storyline. Watching Radix pull away from Goku's grip and watching our hero die and then Piccolo following soon after is a really cool different story that we always got in every other Dragon Ball Z game. Just because this is the closest we'll actually ever get to having a different alternate Dragon Ball Z game in the animation type form. So I do love the what if parts and they keep the story really interesting for me. The graphics are high-end, or at least a nice upgrade from that Battle of Shit, I mean Battle of Z game. Everyone is well detailed in the style, from going to the cutscene to the fight is pretty flawless. The specials also look really good, and there's no major complaints at all on the graphics side. The RPG feature works well. You get points in which you can attribute uh, into these different categories and make your fighter a close-range fighter, a far-range fighter, mix and match, so on, so on. Overall, it keeps it so that every battle actually gives you a reward of some sort. Now, that's really where the good ends, in my opinion. First on the bad list. The voice acting is pretty much phoned in for most of the actors here. I was almost baffled at some of the voice acting, actually, especially from the shit that whoever voiced Frieza it just took you out of the story, and it was just, ugh, horrible at some Who are you? No, I don't need to know. You honestly think you can win? So the combat seems to lack much death. You get enough specials and supers to make it pretty fun, but the combat itself stays mostly the same with every character. I never felt a major change, and if you thought that the Tenkai Chi series was samey samey with all the characters, don't even bother with this, because basically every character is the same, minus the specials and supers. Also, the hub world is pretty much the most boring thing to ever, ever travel around. In between main missions and side missions, you basically walk around this boring ass town that's split into three sections in which you can buy new armor and skills, but it would just serve better if they were menus. That way you could just easily go through the shop, buy your shit, and leave instead of walking around this dumbass hub world. And now the uglies. While the RPG feature is nice, it also makes the game go at a really slow pace at times. I want to go through the story mode. You know, the most interesting part of the damn game. Chances are, though, you have to grind at least somewhat or most of the time to get through the story mode missions by doing the parallel, aka side missions. Ugh, some of them are just really bad. You're thinking, oh, more side missions, more length. But no, most of them just really kind of fucking suck. They are boring, and all it is is just killing a lot of countless baddies and wasting your time, and then fighting a big bad that takes more than three minutes to fucking finish off sometimes. Nothing is exciting. It's just time filler to extend the game, and you know, anybody who watches that, that's a big old fuck you in my list when you're making a game. Also, the servers suck balls. Half the time you can't connect, the other half you'll be kicked off. What's the point of having these online features and building a game around them if you can't even use them correctly? Fuck that. Listen, 
I love Dragon Ball Z. I've seen it more than I should. I've seen more of the movies countless times than I should. I own the action figures still somewhere in my room upstairs that my wife for some reason lets me keep. I read the manga in English, in Japanese, and in fucking Korean. I started watching it before it even came out in America thanks to my dad bringing back the Chinese and Japanese tapes from Chinatown and Japan. So I do hope one day they'll make a Dragon Ball Z game that is basically the most fan service game ever. And just so much fun. Kind of like what Tenkai Chi 3 and Budokai is. This game is just a bunch of fluff. And I can't give it thumbs up to buy. If you see it cheap or you want to rent it, sure. You might get some love because it's the mass amount of fan service they do try to provide. But the game is actually not that fun to play. You make your own character super fun. But playing it, not so fun. However, if you're expecting another Budokai 3 or Tenkai Chi, you will be sadly disappointed in this one. This game is borderline a 5 or maybe a 6 out of 10 if you're a big Dragon Ball Z fan. If you're not a Dragon Ball Z fan, it is easily a 5 out of 10. And you can definitely tell this is just kind of like the bones in the structure of creating the real great Dragon Ball Z game that we all want.